Welcome to this short uh, demo video of the new end-to-end -end report in the Network Design, uh, AIMS Network Design application. So we built this uh, this report because often uh, users want to see uh, not just the total results, but they want to see from end-to-end, -end, so from supplier through production facilities, DCs, and the various mode of transport, how product flows through the network and uh, get a sense of uh, uh, how that looks for certain segments of the, the supply chain and not the whole supply chain. So the way this report works, firstly, you'll find it uh, in the in the report section over on the workflow here on the left, just below the cost to serve report, and it starts with a um, with a, with a map of this the supply chain, and then using these filters on the right here, you can select different levels. So we'll start with the with the customer level, um, and then when you select a level. Uh, it gives you different side panels here where you can filter based on that level. So I have selected the customer level. So that means I get a customer filter here and then I can go and select one or customer or several customers or a group of customers. And if I select that customer, so for example, I've selected Amsterdam, it then shows me on the map how product flows to that final customer Amsterdam. So there's the customer. It's getting its product from from the local DC in, in uh, Mannheim, which is in turn getting its product from the CDC in, in Munich. And Munich is getting product from these uh, these two suppliers plus a uh, um, uh, product from this supplier, which came from two raw material suppliers. So it's basically giving us a complete picture of product flow to that customer at uh, at uh, Amsterdam from supply all the way through to demand. And as I said, you can select customer groupings here or several customers at the same time. <coughs> I could also do that, for example, at a different level. So if I'm interested in, uh, for example, the, uh, the the flows that go through a particular uh, a DC, I can select the DC level here, and then that filter on the right changes to a DC filter. And then again, I can go and select one DC that I'm interested in. So if I go and select, for example, the Milan uh, LDC, it will now tell me for the Milan LDC, firstly, which customers it's servicing, so those are the, 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 the last mile lines that you see on the map, but also where it gets its product from. So from which uh, CDC and in turn where that CDC gets its product from all the way back through to suppliers. And maybe as a last example, you can also do that. Um, you can do it for production, but let's do one last example at the supplier level. So if I click on supplier uh, here, supplier filter, uh, these, these side filters update and I see a supplier filter. So, for example, if I click on the Antalya finished goods supplier, it's now giving me a complete picture of the products that are, pre are purchased from that supplier. Which CDCs do they go to? Which LDCs do they go to? And which customers ultimately do they do they do they service? So that's how the map view uh, works. And of course, you, there's always the data that that lies underneath that. So if we go back to um, back to the customer level, and we return to that uh, that customer in Amsterdam. <coughs> What we saw on the map previously is also now contained in this table at the bottom here. So this table tells us the steps in the process from supply through to demand, uh, how that product flows in terms of volume, in terms of cost, and also in terms of the custom objectives. In this example, we've created a custom objective called carbon emissions. So now I can see step through step by step as product flows through the supply chain to Amsterdam, how those carbon emissions are built up and how those, those costs are, are built up. So if you look at the table, there's, there's three, it's, it's per, per, per customer and per product and period. But these three fields here are quite important. So location from, location to, and resource. So for example, supply, if you look at this row, the location from and location to are the same, and there's no resource because this is the supply aspect of the supply chain. Um, but if you move on to a transport row, for example, here, it's got a, a location from and a location to. So this now tells me, on the movement between two locations, uh, whereas the previous one was all happening at one location, really, this is a movement between two locations. So from Krems to COG uh, Munich, but no resource because there's no resources on a on a um, on a transport lane. And then finally, if you look at a production row, the location from and to is the same, but now you've got the information at a resource level. So yeah, they named the same, but uh, you can also, if you've got multiple resources at one location doing different production steps, you'll be able to see those uh, those different steps at the resource location uh, level as well. 
And that gives you a nice buildup of how product flows through the supply chain and ultimately how you get to the total cost and the total uh, carbon emissions. So that's a summary of the the end-to-end -end report and worth also mentioning that in terms of um, expanding the reporting on the custom objectives for example here it's about carbon emissions we've also added a second table to the cost to serve report so i've gone to the cost to serve report which is one above the the end-to-end -end report and this table has always been there where it breaks down the cost to serve in terms of the the different buckets so supply the uh, resource fixed dc variable etc to understand the breakdowns of the total cost. We've now added a similar table below that where it does the same thing for the custom objectives. So yeah, for example, the custom objective is carbon emissions. And if we look at that customer, we still got the filter on for Amsterdam. So it's just select Amsterdam here. Um, I can now see the total volume, but I can also see where the carbon emissions are coming in per bucket. So that's the production variable that's on primary transport, that's the inter-resource secondary transport etc and that's the total carbon emissions so just an extra way to look at the the data in a cost to serve manner but then for the customer objectives that's the end of that demo hope you enjoyed